Hey up troops, it's a little thing. Oh, I'm gonna go sit in Mamo. It's safer over there. I'll see you in a sec. That really stings. Hey up troops, it's A Littleton here again with another video and this time we're going to look at how to play Legion. Legion is simply put, never ever a bad pick. He has impacts for making rotations, he has some of the best utility in the game, he has an unbelievably good gun on defense, he's just a great pick. So today we'll start with Legion's basics with his loadout and then the basics of his utility and then we'll go into some more advanced tips and tricks that you can do with a goo mine, some of which are very useful indeed. So make sure you watch the video. So we'll get started with a gameplay clip that I recorded the other day about how I play Legion. I'm talking over the top of it and I'm not particularly good at talking about things whilst I'm doing things. So just ignore the fact that it's a bit cringe, all right? Just mute it if you have to, but watch what I do because that is the important thing. Anyway, enough waffling. Let's get stuck into it. Swap! Okay, so my plan here is to play around the top of clock stairs or orange stairs. And what I'm going to do is put a goo mine on the stairs about halfway up between uh, Echo's legs there. And I'm going to chuck one down here on this door. Now, there is an argument to say you should put the goo mine here because if anyone comes through this window, but I'm going to hear if anyone comes through that window. And I'm pretty much sort of set to play around here. Now, I'm going to make a line of sight so I can see the breach, which I believe hasn't been reinforced. <laughs> yeah, of course it hasn't. But I can see that now. Any run-ins from there, from this door. And we're just going to hold this goo mine. Which I can't see on the stairs. But is there. Still another one on this door. There's one on the door to the right as well. Last one's on the stairs where I gooed him. You heard him go off on the stairs. Midway up the stairs, I think. If he gets to the top, you should either goo go. That's how you play Legion. Okay, so getting started with Legion's loadout then, and this is, I know I say this on almost every operator, this has to be one of the most cut and dry loadouts, right? So he has the 612, the T5, the Q929, impacts, and a bulletproof. I don't know anyone that doesn't run Legion and not use the T5. Obviously, you've got to use the Q9, but also impacts. I can tell you, I think I said this in the Ying video, I've genuinely never, ever used that shotgun. I've seen people use it, but I, I've genuinely never used that shotgun. The capacity is low. The damage seems low. I just don't think there's much good about it. And also, I'm not a massive shotgun guy, as we've said before. The T5, on the other hand, is an absolute laser. There's very little recoil. It's really, really easy to control. 30 rounds is not bad. Decent high fire rate. It's a really solid defensive weapon. Q929 is just a run-of-the-mill pistol. But again, it's got pretty high damage for a pistol. And it's, um, it's not a bad pistol at all. Now... You, you, let me just spit this out. <laughs> you, it's an argument to say, like for me, I would always take impacts. But the reason I stuttered there is because there is an argument to say take a bulletproof if you know that your team has got the um, ability to make rotates with a shotgun or uh, someone else who's got impacts or an oryx who wants to lose health and make a rotate, however you want to do it. But for me, that the impacts are handy because Legion is generally going to be on the roam. So being able to make a rotate whilst you're around or to drop a hatch if you're in an emergency and you need to get away or whatever it might be. I think, to me, impacts are usually the choice that I go with. But if someone said, well, I don't need impacts because smoke's going to open the hatch for me and make the rotate, so I'll give the, the team a bulletproof instead, then that makes sense too. But most of the time, I'm going to go T5, Q929, and impacts. Okay, so getting started with Legion's basics then. Legion has access to these things. This is a goo mine. We throw this on the floor. The lid pops off. And now we've got several upturned needles waiting for somebody to stand on it from the attacking side. Now, one thing I want to just say quickly whilst I've got Ash in front of me is everybody seems to think you need to stand directly on a goo mine to trigger it. That is not the case. The goo mine has a meter either side where stepping within a meter radius 
around the goo mine will trigger it. So if I just take control of Ash and we start walking towards the goo mine, as you can see from here, we're not going to stand on it. Let's go a bit further over. You can see we're not going to stand on the goo mine from there. If we were to walk past at this line, we wouldn't stand on it. However, you will still get gooed. You can see there, within a meter, the goo mine will activate. Now, what happens when you stand on a goo mine? We just throw another down. We get Ash to walk over it. When an attacker stands on a goo mine, they become poisoned. The screen becomes blurry and they start taking damage and they cannot sprint. They can still crouch. They can still go prone. I'll just stare at Ash a little bit more. They can st crouch and go prone. They just start taking damage. And you start taking damage to the tune of 4 HP every 2 seconds. If the attacker press and holds the action key, they'll take the needle or the, uh, the syringe or whatever it is at the bottom of the foot. So it's four damage every two seconds. Now the goo mine has to be placed on a flat surface for it to go off. What I'm gonna do is try and throw a goo mine on this sort of draw unit here to show you that it won't set until it hits a flat surface. So as you can see, it has to hit that flat surface for it to go off. You can't put it on an angle on anything. Eventually it righted itself there, but if we try and throw it on the side there, it has to, has to be flat to the uh, sort of um, flat to the floor for it to uh, to activate. If you throw it at a wall, it will bounce off, but not very far. It's a really good technique to know that if you wanted to get a goo mine at the bottom of this door, don't throw it in your, let's just say you're on this door. You wouldn't try and throw it at the door. Throw it at the top of the door and it'll drop to the floor at the bottom. So throw it at the door and it'll drop at the bottom there, as you can see. We'll do that again, so it'll throw it slightly higher this time and it'll bounce onto the door. It's much easier to do that rather than trying to get an accurate throw, unless you've, you know, practiced your art of throwing goo mines. Especially over distance. Yeah, throw it at the top of the door, and it'll bounce to the bottom. That just comes with time. So a common question with Legion is, can an attacker walk into two goo mines, and does that mean then it does eight damage every two seconds? The answer to that is yes and no. So if I walk forward with Ash, Ash can walk into one goo mine, and then walk into another goo mine. However, the damage is not multiplied. The poisonous effect on the screen is not any worse. All it does is just reset that damage timer. So if you um, if you just get uh, ticked by the four damage, it'll start it again straight away. You won't have to wait the two seconds to get the four damage. It'll just start that timer again straight away. It's not really worth doubling up on your goo mines. In terms of how many goo mines Legion gets, he gets two in the prep phase and one every 30 seconds at the start of the action phase, give or take. It results in a total of eight goo mines over the course of a round, but he gets definitely one to start with, and then he always gets one just before the start of the action phase, and then one every 30 seconds. So we just saw that replenish there. We've now got a three down at the bottom. And as you can see, down the bottom right-hand side, the, third, the fourth one will be generating, and that's every 30 seconds. So a really cool feature on the goo mine is when a, an attacker comes to plant. If we put a... Uh, in fact, no, let's not put the goo mine down for now. Let's just bring Thatcher into a uh, kitchen door. And you can see here, you can start planting because this is the bomb site. Down the plan goes. So if we then move away. If we then put a goo mine on the door, as Thatcher comes into plant, remember that the um, remove goo mine button is the same as the plant button. No matter what you set your keybinds to, you can't set them separately. It's the same on console. The plant button is the same as the remove goo mine button. So when I walk through now into the site, I can't plant. I'm pressing the plant button, but obviously it's removing the goo mine instead. I'm turning Thatcher in a circle every time I do. Can we make him turn all the way around? Thatcher's got a dance on. 180. Come on, mate, you're nearly all the way around here. I mean, why am I doing this? Oh, I'm, I'm, we're off, you know, we're... We're getting there. Here he comes. Hi, mate! I didn't realize it made you spin around like that. Well, there you go. That's something we just learned as well. Anyway, he can't plant. He needs to take that needle out of his foot. Now he can plant. So putting goo mines on doors to sites is a really good... Towards the end of the round, obviously, if, you, if you're back in sight and you know that there's like a, a push going to be coming, you, it, even if there's like five or six seconds left, you can chuck that goo mine there and just run away. Because you know they're not going to get through that door, get the needle out, and plant the bomb in that time. It's a really, really nice feature to remember towards the end of a round. Okay, so the best way of playing Legion, in my opinion, is to put your goo mines in informative locations around the map. So we've got a couple in a pocket here, and we've got one top main. And then you can listen for the sound. So we're going to put one top main. We're going to put one on freezer stairs. 
I'm going to put one on uh, on white stairs here. Pop. And what you need to do now is, you know, go and play wherever you want to play. But just you've got to remember where you've put those goo mines. Because if the goo mine here pops or the goo mine on freezer stairs pops, you're going to hear it a lot, lot louder than you are the one on main stairs. So if you can remember where you've put the goo mines, you're going to have a better chance of understanding where they are. And you can give call outs based on the goo mines. The other thing to think about as well, by the way, is uh, Legion can only see his goo mines up to 10 meters away. So you can see as we back off here, this, uh, this, this symbol that shows us the goo mine is going to disappear. And when it goes out of line of sight, I mustn't be 10 meters away here, but it's 10 meters. Although there is actually, I don't know if Ubisoft are aware of this, but there is a bug where you can, you can sort of ping it, look at it, look at it, ping it. And then if you walk away, you can still see it for a little while. There's no, I can't get it to work consistently, but as you can see here, we're on a position where we're now, the line of sight's gone. Now we can see. So if the, it's in line of sight, you can see it. Obviously we can't see the one on freezer, but if you come around here, we're going to be within 10 meters. You're going to be able to see it. The line of sight's just cocking us up on the stairs there. But again, you'll be able to see it there. Now we can't see it. Now we can. So just bear that in mind. You can, you know, obviously, you're not going to be able to see everyone. Do you remember back in the day, any OG players, when Legion could see every goo mine he's placed? So you could, you, we'd be able to see all the, the icons for the goo mines now. And if the goo mine went off on main, you'd see that the icon has disappeared. It was so strong. But yeah, play it in areas where you know people are going to be coming through. The other big tip I can tell you as well is if you wanted to put something in split like this, I mean, this is quite obvious, but I'm going to tell you anyway. No point in putting a goo mine there. Waste of time. Because they can just walk through to the right-hand side of this door. So if you're putting it somewhere like this, you've got to make sure you put your goo mine in the area where people are going to walk through. Remember at the start of the video, we said it has a meter range. It's no good there, because if somebody walks down this side of the door, they're not going to trigger, trigger it. It needs to be there so just to go over a couple of tips when placing goo mines one is a really really good tip and this one is fairly obvious when it comes to placing a goo mine at the top of the stairs if you can avoid it don't place the goo mine at the very top of the stairs always place it on the top step and the reason i say that is if you're coming down it does it doesn't work going upstairs because we can still see this here right but if you're going downstairs we can see this goo mine here is very obvious we can't see the one underneath until it's very last minute. And even then, it's because it's highlighted for us. But it's much harder to see that. Also, if you're droning, as the drone's coming down, because the drone's, like, ground level, you can see the goo mines quite easily from drones. However, you won't see this one because of the way the drone angles work. You'll just go straight over it as you go down the stairs. So a drone won't pick this up, but it will pick that up. So just think about that when you're placing the goo mines now. Right then, the big moment. If you're going to take anything from this video, take this. Not everyone knows this, but you can goo people on Rapal. As you can hear, we've got Ayana outside. Oh, there she is. Hey, Ayana. You can goo people on Rapal, and the beauty of it is, is they can't take the goo mine out whilst they're on that Rapal. So, you throw the... Don't try and throw the goo mine onto the windowsill like this, because it'll likely fall out the side. Throw the goo mine either at the sort of bottom of the window or on the side of the window so it bounces to the middle. That goo mine there will goo mine. That, I'm saying goo mine a lot here. That goo mine will 99 times out of 10. Well, in fact, it's not even 99 times out of 10. It's 100% of the time. Will goo somebody that repels on that window. So if we just move my honor up. I've gone upside down here now. So at the top of the window, not getting gooed. Lovely. Go around, spin around. This is difficult to do the second controller. A uh, second keyboard. And then as I come, we come across the window, now we're gooed. Now, the beauty of it is, I can't take that... I'm pressing remove goo mine. I can't do that now. You need to go off the rappel to the ground at the bottom and then remove the goo mine. It's so, 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 so strong. Being able... And also, by the way, whilst we're here, just to show you while we're on the table, you can... The goo mine doesn't have to be on the floor to goo people. As long as somebody walks next to it... See how that got her on the table there? So you can place it in places as well. Place it in place. You can put the goo mines in places where people aren't suspecting because they're looking on the floor for goo mines. But if you were to put it on like this surface here and someone walk past this, it would still affect. It doesn't have to be stood on. But yeah, anyway, back to the main point. Goo mining windows is incredibly strong, especially on maps like Consulate or, or Bank on like CEO area where people use the repels a lot. Being able to just throw that on there, you can now ignore that window until you hear that goo go off. It's so, 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 so strong. And also, it forces people off the rappel, which is incredible as well. 
Just another quick one. I think this is fairly obvious, though, after what we talked about downstairs. Yes, we can put them on doors to stop someone planting when they come through the door. But don't forget, you can also just put them in default plant spots. They're even harder to see there. So this breach is open. You know, you've got your thermite with eight seconds left. Goes, oh, no, wait, there's no... Oh, I've killed the attic guy. I've killed the attic guy. Right, I'm going to go plant default. Oh, wait, no, I can't plant because I've just stepped on a guma. So, yeah, just don't forget to put them in default plant spots as well because that's also a really good way of helping your team later in the round. So there we have it. That's how I play Legion and how I think Legion is best played. Fingers crossed you took something from me that can help you in the game. For everyone that got this far, if you did get this far, I massively appreciate it. If you got this far, comment a random word. Comment table in the comments if you got this far. Because surely no one's watched this all the way through. But if you have got this far, thank you very much for your support. I appreciate you watching all the videos. I couldn't do this without you, so cheers. Other than that, I'll see you next time. Cheers!